Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Episode 2, The Creation Story Part 2, Let There Be Light. Hi Omri. Hi. How are you doing? Okay. So in our first episode, we start in the beginning, as the text says, and we broke down the creation story's main character, God, or gods, an abstract proto-monotheistic deity that rearranges the world with the power of his magical speech. In this episode, we want to go over how that world was built. So let's recap. God, or gods, or Elohim, made the world in six days. First, he turned on the light to separate the day from the night. He then created the sky and the earth, the seas, the vegetations, and the animals. And on the sixth day, he created humans, a male and a female. On the seventh day, the Sabbath, Shabbat, he rested. So, Omri, one of the first things that pops to me, to my mind, when I'm reading this story is how this creation story is very deliberate. There's a master plan. God he doesn't wing it. And it was told aloud for generations and centuries before it was put into writing. So, you know, they had time to have uh, focus groups before publishing to see if it's repetitive enough, but not too repetitive. No, no, I don't think they, they did focus groups back then. I think that if you didn't get stoned, it was, the, <laughs> it was a good enough sign that uh, it went well. I, th I think the story is perfect and might be the best story of the whole damn book. I imagine it like the opening sequence or some of the sequences later of uh, Space Odyssey 2001. By Stanley Kubrick. It's like a, it's an ancient story that doesn't follow the norms of the genre. Of the creation story. Of the creation story. Yes. And to me, it reminds me of Space Odyssey 2001 because the opening sequence is monkeys. It's something very strange and apes. alienated apes. It's very difficult to really project your own motivations yes. and fears. You have no one to ident identify with. You can't tell them apart. You can't tell them apart even. And uh, it's very long. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> the the moral of the story or the conflict in this story is is more in the subtext and yes. the feeling yes. that it makes it yes. makes you feel yes. the way that the, this sequence makes you feel with the music with the anxiety with the raw emotions and I think this is the drama yes. in this story in the creation story so how impactful was this particular story written three thousand years ago approximately where we're sitting now along the coast of uh, modern Israel. It boggles the mind because the seven day week, this is where it originates, this text. Everybody in the world lives in a seven day week. And, but we are the only ones who are, you know, truly conserve <laughs> the actual story because we rest on the, on the seventh time. day yes. and we start the work week on Sunday. This is a Sunday. We are now recording on a Sunday. This is a regular work day. We call Sunday first day the first day it oh. literally means first day yes Yom Rishon. The, and this is the story first day the second exactly. day the third day you guys have the day of the sun the day of the moon the day of a twig she's a nordish uh, whatever tweed or something nordish uh, deity you have uh, odin's day you have thor's day so this is not uh, according to the story you guys straight away yeah okay so let's start with day one God brought the light. It was dark and scary before he turned on the light. It actually says light five times at the beginning. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. So it's really pushing that point home. Light, you have light, that's yeah. life. This is God. He gave you the light. In Hebrew, it sounds to me more like a, a market uh, sale. Like uh, this potato is uh, two dollars, dollars, two dollars, potato, two dollars, <laughs> potato. It, the language here is more colloquial to me. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. it will be a reoccurring theme in this podcast to uh, play down the language. No, to disagree on it. Because, disagree, yeah. because for, for us, this language also, this is not something that someone will say in the market today in, with modern Hebrew. This is also no, uh, modern Hebrew, experience no. yeah, for us. But 
ויבדל אלוהים בין האור ובין החושך, separating, uh, this is, uh, for us it is a high language. Yeah, for us it's a high language, but it, uh, it's misleading that it's a high language. It's some kind of a, an illusion, because we have modern words, so ancient words became more elitist. Right, because only the elite knew exactly. that. Exactly. So when they said those high words, like, Vayera Elohim instead of uh, God saw, the word in Hebrew here is Vayar instead of Ra'a, which is more colloquial, more modern. So the illusion here is that we imagine some kind of a mm. highly educated scholar, mm. which they probably were, but with their limited uh, scholarly knowledge of back then, mm. that has some kind of a written tradition and he chooses a higher word to describe what he wants to say. And I don't think that, I think the, ah. I think the vocabulary pool of that era was pretty much thin. There weren't many words, first most. But they had the best words. But not so many, <laughs> that's why they were the best. <laughs> And uh, there weren't any written traditions. Now, mm. Mm. every writer writes after at least right. 300 or maybe 500 years of written tradition. Right. Uh, in his or her language. In yeah. his or her language. If you're English speaking, probably Shakespeare. And, but the novels, the novels that... Mm. This is very important what you're saying. Yeah. The Because they were basically the pioneers of the written tradition. Exactly. In that, in that specific area. So here in this In this creation story, this is the first creation story, there's another creation story. Here in this creation story, God is the one who is naming all the things. He's saying, the thing that holds the water above, the firmament, Rakia. Uh, he called the light uh, day, the darkness, night. In the second story, we're going to see it, it's, it's going to be like a playground, mm -hmm. like uh, Adam, the first man, he's the one who's naming things. So here, he's the only active character. It's like a major, major difference, which almost makes you feel suspicious that those are completely different stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about that. Uh, different uh, times and uh, different written peoples. by different people. Yes, yeah, so trying to say and, have, and just having a different God. It's, it's, it's just not the yeah, same God. It's not the same God. Here <laughs> it's, a, it's a different word, plural again, uh, with a master plan that he creates something and then he sees that it's good. I think the good here is not good as we imagine it, as benevolent, uh, awe-inspiring. Uh, Positive. It works. It's good because it works. Whatever God decided, it has logic. It's like a, some kind of a BuzzFeed uh, list of uh, 10 uh, unanswered questions you, already, uh, you always had and uh, you were afraid to ask. Why uh, are the stars there? Why... Uh, There's a difference between farm animals and regular right. animals. Why, why do we control the animals? Exactly. Why the skies and the seas are the same color? So the good here is God did something. It works. So you made a compelling case with the logic theme. But since we know the character of God, we read ahead. Afterwards, now it's, it's clearly two separate gods, but later they become one. That God is pretty full of himself and he likes uh, to be told uh, good things about him. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Bless you, uh, Lord slash Yahweh, God, our God, the King of the world. He likes that kind of stuff. Maybe he's like, I don't no, know what God. He's good, he's proud of himself. And at the end... I don't know a God that doesn't like him. <laughs> so, and at the very end, he doesn't say, when he creates uh, the, the humans, he says, it was very good. Yeah. So now he's like, oh, I'm really happy yeah. with that. He might be happy with himself. And we can see some kind of an intuitive hierarchy of beings uh, in the cultivation of this creation by creating the humans. Because mm. the first thing that are being created are inanimate objects like skies, sea, whatever. Mm -hmm. Trees. Then the trees. Then the trees, which are, yeah. which are like yeah, inanimate but objects, but more complicated they're alive also yeah they grow they die yeah they move they move in the wind <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like the insect and the vermin which <laughs> the are vermin. the vermin <laughs> which are like animated objects but 
very auto- automated and very predictable and tiny and when you squash them you see don't no brain and the blood is uh, is different and then comes the regular animals and then the farm animals which is quite uh, telling that for the, this agricultural society farm animals were a different category than regular animals uh, of course they animals. know this as they know these animals uh, personally But the fact that they mentioned here specifically, it's very, very telling. Yes. And of course, humans are the cultivation of this creation, as we said. They are the most complicated and unpredictable. But, but on that, so only now when I re-re-re-re-re-read the story, I noticed that the farm animals are made on the sixth day, on the same day that the humans are made. This is how the story is told. After, after it creates all the wild animals, it said, and the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And then he brings forth living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping things, <laughs> whatever. And then, it be- and then the humans. So it's actually even more telling that they're on the same level, the same day. Okay, not exactly the same level because uh, uh, humans are made last, but on the same day. Yeah. So they're kind of like together. This is uh, very interesting. And God gives dominion to everything that grows and to everything that moveth and lives. He gives them t- any, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> like the word in Hebrew, redu, lirdot. This is like to be a tyrant yeah. on these animals. This is your dominion. But before that, the basis of the world, the lights, This is not something that uh, this is something that rules over humans. When he created the, the big lights and the smaller lights for the day and for the night, this is very scientific. They govern the day and govern the night. So in this hierarchy, they are above us humans. I don't think necessarily they are domineering over humans as they are domineering over time. Okay. It's like they are the colonial uh, governors of God. They control the yes. aspect of time. And the aspect of time here is very, very, very important because, again, with the logic theme and the order theme, it reminds the listener that the time was created to give order in your days yes. so you will know when to worship your God. Yes, Moadim. Exactly. That's like the, the time to worship. Like a, whatever, a holiday. A holiday. Moadim le simcha. Happy holidays. Right. So these holidays worshiping, this is, the, this is part of the order mm-hmm. that these governors are telling you, okay, now, now this is what you're doing. And in, this, in, th- in that time, such a superstitious religious time, we have to, to, to get into these people's heads. Something that gives so much order to the world around you and to your day-to-day experience, this is very attractive. Very attractive and soothing. 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 And soothing. Soothing. <laughs> it's very attractive and relaxing. Yes, also because it's like a mantra, like a haim on the first day that it was good, by Akito, blah, 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 blah. It's exactly. very repetitive. It's like, yeah, and it's, okay, now I understand it. It's very simple, very, very simple in, in the good sense of the world. It's not simplistic. And order gives the illusion of controlling your destiny yes covering your tracks in order that your future will be safe because their future of th- those people who lived back then was full of real real anxiety yes real anxiety Many to unknowns. either be murdered by a different tribe or be hungry the larger the control you have over your reality mm. With your worship. Yeah, with the deal that you made mm-hmm. with your deity, the safer and more yes. relaxed you feel. So it, it's almost like a survival mechanism of agricultural societies. Because back way, way back, 50,000 years ago, hunter-gatherers had anxieties, but their anxieties were quote-unquote real. Right, evolutionary. To tackle savannah challenges. And here, after we became <laughs> agricultural, the anxiety is because we were detached from the day-to-day manifestations of those anxieties, like a tiger comes, you need mm-hmm. to flee. I feel it as a, as a football fan, soccer fan. Okay. I consider myself very rational. Yes. And uh, I think twice about things and I reject uh, superstitions. But? But when I face 
the extreme, extreme anxiety of watching my team play, I don't care. Give me anything. Anything will work. In the last, if in the last game we won by 4 nil, and I wore uh, uh, some kind of an underwear, I will wear that underwear again because it will give me an edge. Even if I don't believe it, I, I live in such an extreme anxiety in those 90 minutes that I don't care. So imagine people that live in extreme anxiety every waking hour. And they believe in that thing anyway. They have to believe in that thing. <laughs> So this story gives them a powerful message that there is order. Cosmic order There also. is and there are answers. God is good not in the Christian sense mm. that he cares, he is benevolent. Yeah, no, no. He's good because he knows what works. Let's go over some of the creations and uh, how it's different uh, in the translation. So. It's very specific when God creates uh, all kinds of animals. So it says, Vayivra Elohim et ha-taninim agdolim. The big alligators, tanin is the... Crocodiles. Crocodiles. Alligators, they are only in Florida. Okay, sorry, crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't have crocodiles here, and it's probably not... Uh, the, the, the meaning back then was yeah. probably not uh, crocodiles. Yeah. But in the English version, it's great whales. Yeah. So this is already these are people who live in whatever in a in a grassy on a grassy hill with forests and it's cold all yeah. the time and there's big waters all around the North Sea and all that. This is not what they're saying here. Also, it's not great. It's just big. Yeah, probably the big fish. Also, like you know, uh, Jonah. Exactly. Jonah. It wasn't uh, eaten by a whale, but by a big fish. Just yeah, big fish. and it's interesting because there it's the Leviathan, which mm. to an English speaking. Uh, listener or reader leviathan is a big big uh, mythical. mythical creature monster yes and in hebrew it means whale leviathan leviathan yes and here the in english in the english translation they say whales <laughs> and here we say crocodiles okay this is weird but there's some kind of a mythical the waters you know if we try to put ourselves in their shoes in their limited technology and limited uh, imagination the sea the inside of the sea can hold the biggest, most scariest monsters ever. So when they say here taninim, which are crocodiles, but they probably mean big fish, it's funny to me. <laughs> it's like, it's, like it's, it's important to, to mention that in your creation story, because it's something that is mm. part of their uh, collective imagination, that there are sea creatures. Yes. On the sixth day when he creates man, ויאמר אלוהים נעשה אדם בצלמנו כדמותנו. So uh -oh. this is uh, <laughs> yeah uh oh non monotheistic <laughs> alert non monotheistic alert. So God created man in his in his own image. That's fake news. <laughs> in the Hebrew text we tell you it says created in our image. Yes. So this is plural and it goes to this plural God Elohim El Elohim the it says deities. So this is something that was left in the editing that uh, it brings a problem because uh, this is like a, an archaeological remnant, as you said in the previous episode, of a polytheistic uh, society, which yeah. it was. And we're lucky that they considered the words that they write as holy because that's why they didn't change that. The editor s was supposed <laughs> to change that in, in our image to in my image. And the seventh day is very interesting. Because if you read the, the chapter, it ends on the sixth day. It's not even on this episode. What kind of story ends just before <laughs> the end and then has the conclusion of the story, the last part of the story, attached to the second creation story? This is very weird editing. It's a uh, very weird editing for us because we have the tradition. But for them, it's very reasonable. They wanted to make an artificial uh, connection between the two stories not artificial. Right, to give street cred to the second exactly. one. Exactly, because if you tell them apart and it ends on the seventh day, then it's more obvious that there are two different stories. Right. But it, if you tell them and the oh. first episode is the to be continued of the last episode. Yeah, this is one continuum. The first one was the opening of the Simpsons, to zoom into the clouds and then into their houses. And then the episode starts uh, with more details and character arcs and different characters and a conflict and motivations. Right. And even when I remember me at a young age, when I heard the stories back to back, 
it didn't pop into my head that, that there are two yeah. different stories. No, nobody. I thought it was the notices. continuation of the the first story. Because it's more like detailed. A it's like a cognitive dissonance. It's like no, just because it, it doesn't work yeah. with with what we're told that this story is. You can't have two creation stories in a monotheistic uh, religion. No. All polytheistic religions have several uh, creation stories. So the message here is kind of a message to humans. To the humans who lived back then that all of this order is made for you you are part of this order mm -hmm. and you tyrannize other being doesn't say specifically that the world is your playground but the sense is that there is some kind of a logical reasonable father because it's obvious that all of those deities are yeah. some kind of manifestations of fathers and mothers the father here is reasonable. He had a plan. He's a very different father than the next episode, as we'll see. Yes. So in the next episode, we'll talk about a father who uh, tries stuff out and then some stuff he says, OK, that didn't work. So let me change it. And he has a name. And this is a totally different creation story that tells us a lot about these people and the editing job that was done because the people who who made the final version of this text, the Bible, they are the ones that wrote the second story. Mm -hmm. The first story is by the rival uh, kingdom of Israel, more to the was north, destroyed. and later assimilated into the Judean uh, tradition. So their story, they put their story second. We're going to break down the story in two episodes. First, we'll talk about the nature of that creation. And on the second episode, we'll talk about the local nature of this uh, creation story and what it tells us about their world around them. It's going to be very cool. Stick around and uh, follow us if you want to catch those episodes and tell your friends, help us out. We're starting out and we want to do this. We're going to go for the long haul. So thank you, Omri. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you all. Uh, we'll see you all here uh, next time. Bye.